Hi there, and welcome to JCB Tools. My name's Adrian, and today, as you can see in front of me here, I've got the JCB CH7500P. I'm gonna go through a few tips and tricks, troubleshooting perhaps, and a few health and safety tips as well. So, as we're talking about this model, I have done a full out-of-the-box video on this, which explains completely how to put it together, and you'll see a link to it at the top of the screen. So, we've put it all together, and you're having trouble starting the machine. I'll show you the first things to look at. So the most common cause of a non-starting engine is typically not enough engine oil. The machine does have low oil protection, so if there's not enough oil in it, the engine won't start because it kills the spark to the spark plug. So there are two filling points, one this side, one the other. This is the easiest one for me to show you. When you fill it with engine oil and the machine on a nice level surface, we need to put enough oil in the engine that it comes right up to the weir point of the hole so at a point where if you were to put any more in, it would start pouring back out again. And that's with it on nice level ground. Once you're at that point, we can refit the plug and we can try again. If that doesn't work and it still doesn't start, we'll move on to the next stage. So the next most common causes are the very simple ones. On the top here, we have an emergency stop. It pushes down and it's in the down position and locks there. Again, that would kill the spark and the engine won't start. Rotate it clockwise, pops back up. That's ruled that out of the equation. The next one is the crash bar here. It pushes down and stays down. This would kill the spark again. Make sure that this bar is in the up position. So the next thing, we're going to check and see if we've actually got a spark. So I'll simply pull the spark plug cap off, put it out the way. The tools are provided to remove the spark plug. I'll put the spanner down over the spark plug, loosen it off anti-clockwise. Let me just get in there without getting in the way of the camera. And I'll remove the spark plug. Okay, so. Got the spark plug removed. What I'm going to do is put the spark plug back in the cap click it into position, touch it on the body of the machine. So with all that, everything, all the um, emergency stops removed, nothing switched on, I'm going to pull over the recoil and check to see if I've got a spark. If I've got a spark, we know that there's nothing wrong with anything ignition related, and we'll move on to the fuel side. If I haven't got a spark, we'll move on and we'll check something else. Another thing that can kill the spark is the interlock switch down here. So you must make sure that the bolts or nuts and bolts that hold your hopper here are fully tightened down so that it's well clamped. If it's not completely closed, it won't be pushing far enough back against this switch to shut it. When the switch is shut, it breaks the circuit and allows the spark. So you must make sure that these nuts are fully done up. Otherwise, the engine won't start again. So going along the lines that we didn't have a spark when we checked at the spark plug. Just to try and narrow it down, the first thing I'll do is disconnect the two stops that are on the end of the hopper. By disconnecting this, I'm ruling out the bar and the emergency stop button. So now we would check for spark again. If we now have spark, we know that the problem lies at the hopper and we can look at that. If we still don't have spark, we now need to go to the control box or the junction box. So what I'll do is start with the junction box, show you what might be wrong in there. Obviously, we can then move back. If you were in a case where removing this allowed the spark and we've got spark again and the engine starts, then we know the problem lies in the hopper and we'll go through that secondly. So the first thing I'm going to do is open this box. So I've just simply got a cross screwdriver. I'll remove the four screws. I've just dropped the hopper out of the way just so that you can see things a bit more easily. Take the four screws out, put them to one side and take the lid off. So from the oil level switch, the on off switch and the emergency stops we'll call them, they all terminate in this box. So what we're looking for is the only source of metal or ground in this box would be the metal part here, which is the diode, which goes to the sump. Okay, what we're making sure is that all these little insulators are in place and insulating all the connections. So if I just 
show an example. If that were back, for instance, and that metal were touching on the diode, that would be enough to ground out the spark pack and stop the spark. So all I did then was open up the box and just had a quick inspection to make sure all the little plastic insulators that stop anything touching on the metal are in place. And these are, so that's good. And again, on the same note, that there's nothing disconnected. If there was something disconnected, there's a good chance that maybe the on-off switch doesn't switch the engine off, or if you were to push the emergency start, for instance, it wouldn't stop the engine. These are things we need to check when we first start operating the machine. Again, if you find that any, something isn't working, most likely culprit would be in this box, and we can just make sure that the connections are all made and well insulated, as I stated. So again, on the inlet side, you can see another little switch here. So again, when we close the inlet chute, we need to make sure that that switch is fully pushed. And we do that by making sure that the two nuts that hold the chute closed are in place. Obviously, these are there for your safety, so that if at any time you open the hopper, the engine can't start. So I haven't seen problems with these ever. However, let's just show you a quick check, should it be a problem. So if you were in a position where, when you undid the little white plug at the bottom of the hopper, I've unscrewed the hopper just so that I can show you, it's easier to film. I need to pull out the top panel. So if the engine wouldn't start when the plug was plugged in, and when you unplugged it, it now will start, we've got to suspect either this switch or the black handle switch. So I'll start by showing you what this switch should look like. So what we're doing is checking the operation of this switch to make sure that it's breaking the circuit when the button is released and making the circuit when the button is made. So you'll see two wires. Again, this is a multi-purpose switch. So you'll see this is the green side. If I rotate it, you'll see the side with the writing is the red side. The wires should be in the side with the green. So if you look inside, you can see the terminals at the top and the bridge. When I push the button, the bridge goes up and touches the terminals at the top like that. So this one's working perfectly fine. And we just need to look when I release the switch that the contact moves away and breaks the circuit. So that's with the switch pushed. Again, it comes away from the contacts. That's with the switch released. So that's all good. If yours isn't or there's damage or something's happened to this switch, we can obviously get you a replacement switch and it's very easy to change. The emergency stop switch, which is activated by the bar here. The switch is inside this box, and if I push the switch, you'll hear an audible click. We need to make sure, two things really, that when the bar is released, so if this is out of adjustment, when the bar is released, it may not be letting that switch go, so we'll have to adjust it back. And on the same note, to make sure it works, when the bar is pushed, we need to make sure that it's making the switch. And there was a click there, so I know this one is making the switch. So that's good. Part of the test procedure, when you do start your engine up, is to make sure, firstly, that the emergency stop works, the on-off switch on the engine works, and that when this is pushed, this also works and stops the engine. All three of them must stop the engine. So that's almost pre-use safety checks. If this is too far down and the switch isn't broken when the handle's up, it's simply adjusted by adjusting the length of this here. And again, there's a lock nut here, 17 mil spanner. You can loosen this lock nut and adjust the position of this black plate up and down to get it just right on that switch. So what we're looking for is completely released on that switch when the emergency stop or the emergency stop bar is off and when it's on, we need to make sure that it pushes that switch far enough for it to click. And once you're done, lock off the adjuster nut, and that should be good. Okay, so if that's the case, we know we're making the switch, but this bar doesn't work. We'll then go into this box and check some wiring in here. So I've got a 10 mil nut on this side, so I'll just put a 10 mil spanner, and it's a bolt right through the lock. So I'll just undo the two bolts, so we've got this bottom one here. Just get it to the point where I can undo the nylock. So with the two bolts pulled out now, the metal cover plate will just come away. So to access the inside of this box, 
I need to just undo the other two screws on the outside. So I'll undo those and then I can drop the little switch. Okay, so I can remove the three cover screws. And we're just gonna check the wiring on the inside. So, for instance, if one of these screws had broken, or one of these wires had broken and was touching on one of the other metal terminals, again, the engine wouldn't start. Very unlikely, but that's what we're looking for inside these switches. Now, the interlock switches on the machine, exactly the same setup. So if when you've done this, if you still haven't found a fault, but you've still got no spark, definitely the case on a new machine, but if you've still got no spark, it's worth checking the interlock switches that you've got on the end of the two chutes as well. So that's all good in there. I can put it all quite simply back together, refit the screws, relocate it, check its operation. We know that's good. But these are the areas we need to be looking at. So I've just reassembled everything now around this interlock switch. One thing of note, the wires on this one, the two wires went to the upper portion of the switch. So that is the point where when this switch is broken or the plunger is out, it will allow spark. On the other two interlocks, the other two that are on the guards, they need to go on the bottom portion. So we need to make sure of that so that when the plunger is pushed, it allows spark. It works back to front. So that's how that works. So do, and if you do check the other two interlocks, the wires would go on the lower portion instead of the upper. Doesn't matter which way around, but the lower portion instead of the upper. So hopefully, having gone through all these checks, we will have come across the culprit. If we didn't have a spark, um, it's fairly simple to fix. If we had a spark all the while, and the engine doesn't start, we need to move on to another scenario. And of course, this is all referring to a new machine out of the box that doesn't start. If you've got an older machine, you've had it a while, and all of a sudden it doesn't start, then there's a good chance that it could be interlock switches, things like that, jammed up with dirt that are holding them closed, and that could be the cause of the issue. So keeping the machine clean is quite important as well. So what we're gonna do is, on the scenario that we did have a spark, we'll look at, I'm taking it for granted that we've got plenty of fresh fuel in the machine, we'll look at perhaps the machine has been stored for a while or perhaps has a little um, stale oil in the car, a stale fuel in the carburetor, or for instance, if the pallet or packaging had been on its side or turned over, um, during its shipping to you, there's a possibility there could be some engine oil in the carburetor, or there could be, during its testing at the factory, just a little bit of stale fuel in the float bowl. So I'll show you where to drain that out, and then we can start again. So the machine doesn't start. The first thing I'm going to do is turn the fuel tap off, because we don't want the whole contents of the fuel tank, your nice fresh fuel that you've put in, um, pouring out when I release whatever's in the float bowl. So if during shipping it had been on its side, there's a good possibility there could have been some engine oil, residual engine oil left in when it was tested at the factory. There could be some in the float bowl. Your fresh fuel is mixed with it, but it, it literally, it's a mixture of oil and fuel and that's not good. Or it's possible that there was some residual fuel left in it from the factory and that could be stale. And even though a little bit of your fuel has gone in to dilute it, it won't start. So what we do, Simply, this screw here on the side with a 10 mil spanner, so you'll see two bolts, one that's pointing vertically upwards and one on an angle. We're going to remove this bolt. Okay, so I'll just loosen it off. So it's worthwhile having some blue roll, you know, this is about an egg cup size, some blue roll, maybe a coffee cup sized container, something like that, to catch the fuel, because it will run out when you undo the drain plug. And you'll see there's a little red fiber washer on it. See the red fiber washer? Make sure you don't lose that. So anything that's in the carb or in the float bowl, whether that be a mix of petrol and engine oil or stale petrol will come out. So we can undo that, let it run out into your container. And then what I would do is turn the fuel tap on. There's no fuel in this machine, but turn the fuel tap on and let perhaps another egg cup full of fuel run through to dilute and wash out any contamination there may be in this bowl. Switch the fuel tap back off again and then, again, being careful with the red fibre washer, put the little drain back in and tighten it down with a 10 mil spanner. That is a general scenario of what could happen. The other thing we need to check is the air filter. So again, if during transport, the machine's been on its side, 
the exhaust valve happened to be open, there's a good possibility, again, that fuel could run through the carburetor if the inlet valve was open as well, through the crankcase breather, and it could have contaminated the air filter. So we'll just check that the air filter is not wet or full of oil, anything like that. And to do that, very simple. We'll just take the top off and just check around this sponge here. There shouldn't be any sort of overdue signs of engine oil and it shouldn't be particularly wet. You can pull the filter back and it should look nice and clean and not soaking wet with oil. So that can also cause to a non-starting engine. So, um, in the unlikely event that your machine wouldn't start, I hope the few things that I've shown you are going to point you in the right direction to get you up and running quickly. Obviously, you can ring our after-sales department if these things don't work, but those, these are the most likely things that it could possibly be, although some of them are most unlikely, but we've covered every angle in this video of troubleshooting on no spark and fuel issues. So one thing to bear in mind when you're operating a machine like this, when you do start it up, make sure that it will switch off on the on-off switch and make sure that both of the interlocks work. By pushing the guard first, the engine should stop and then start it up again and check your emergency stop as well. So just little safety tips. Obviously, with the correct PPE, ear protection, that sort of thing, keep animals, pets, children, other people at a safe distance. Well, I do hope you found this guide useful. For more information on this or any of our other products, visit jcbtools.co.uk. I've been Adrian, and thank you for watching.